Okay, let's go through problem two. Orange Theory Fitness, OTF, is a gym franchise. Every few months, OTF members complete a benchmark where they run as far as they can via treadmill over a 12-minute span. Corporate would like to assess if OTF members run farther during their second benchmark than their first benchmark on average. The differences in distance, difference is equal to second benchmark minus first benchmark, for 40 randomly selected OTF members were computed in miles in order to test at a 5% significance level the hypotheses mu of d is equal to zero versus mu of d is greater than zero. So right away, <coughs> when we read through the background, we can see that we do have a paired data scenario. Our parameter of interest is mu of d, and we know we'll be running a hypothesis test. So we've got the scenario worked out for us already. So now we can jump into question A. After examining the data, it was determined that it was not reasonable to assume that the 40 observations came from a normally distributed population of differences. Complete this statement about the CLT. Because the sample size is greater than 25, the blank will be approximately normal. If we head over to our help card, we remember that there's some information about the CLT listed on it. If x follows any distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and n is large, then x bar is approximately normal. Well, we do have a large enough n. We have a sample size of 40, so it passes our test that n is greater than or equal to 25. So we know, in this case, the sample statistic, or our sample mean, is going to be approximately normal. The one thing we have to be careful with here is because we're working with a paired data scenario, we're not just dealing with observations, we're dealing with differences, specifically. So instead of just the sample mean, we have to talk about the sample mean of those differences. So instead of x bar, we have d bar. So using the CLT, what will be approximately normal? We know that the distribution of d bar values will be approximately normal. And you are also welcome to write d bar instead as the sample mean differences. So if you had said sample mean, you were on the right track, but we really needed this idea of differences there as well. Moving on to the next question correctly complete the following statement. The observed sample mean difference is blank standard errors away from the hypothesized population mean difference in distance for the population of OTF members represented by the sample. So if we kind of break this down little by little, we've got our sample mean difference, which is d bar. We want to know how far away that is from our hypothesized population mean difference which we know from our null hypothesis, is a value of 0. So how far is d bar from 0 in terms of standard errors? So if we kind of just think about what that would look in a formula, we're seeing how far d bar is away from 0 in terms of standard errors. And if we think about it or remember back to the interpretations, this is simply an interpretation of our t-test statistic for this scenario. So if we head back to the formula card, we know we're working with our population mean of differences section. We can find our t-test statistic listed at the bottom. And this is exactly what we're going for in part b. So now all we have to do is carry out the calculation. We know we're working with this last row of observations here, specifically the differences. So we plug in that 0.14. Well, they don't give us the standard error here, but if we look back to the formula, the standard error is simply the standard deviation of our sample divided by the square root of n. So all we have to do is take our 0 0.31, divide by the square root of 40, and if we do those calculations, you should wind up with a value of 2.8563. So this is the value we're looking for to complete this statement 2.86 standard errors away. Moving on to part C, they give us a p-value of 0 
Corporate would like your help understanding what this value means. Provide an interpretation of the p-value in context. So if we start out by just thinking about what that p-value interpretation is, we remember that assuming the null hypothesis is true, it is the probability of observing what we saw or something more extreme. So now we have to add context to that. So when we go to write this, instead of just saying assuming the null is true, we're going to write out what the null hypothesis actually is in words. We know that it is the population mean difference is equal to zero, specifically the population mean difference in distance. So let's write that out first. So assuming the population mean difference in distance, what are we actually measuring here? If we want to be specific, we can add the direction where it's second benchmark minus first benchmark. And we weren't very picky on this, but you could also add that population of interest for all OTF members. Is 0, we said. So assuming this mu of d is equal to 0. So we've got the first part of our statement down. Now we'd like to say the probability of getting what we observed or something more extreme. So the probability of getting A, and this is where you could go one of two ways. You could talk about the t-test statistic calculated in part B and getting a value more extreme than that, or you could talk about the sample mean difference of 0.14 and talk about that. We'll talk about the test statistic here, as that's what most students chose to write about. So the probability of getting a, let's be specific, it is a t-test statistic of, should always include our value, 2.86. Now instead of or more extreme, we want to be specific with the direction here. So remember, the direction is always in the direction of the alternative hypothesis. So here we simply have to say this value or greater than. And the probability of that we know is 0 0.0034. So again, instead of the test statistic, we could have also said the probability of getting a sample mean difference of 0 0.14 or greater is 0 0.0034. So there were definitely a couple different ways to write this interpretation, um, but this is a good example of one of those ways. As we move on to question D, using a 5% significance level, the null hypothesis was rejected. Is the following conclusion made by corporate appropriate? So we're rejecting the null and going with the alternative. So let's see if this is right. Based on the sample at a 5% significance level, we have sufficient evidence to suggest that all OTF members ran farther during their second benchmark than their first benchmark. Well, it starts out with our 5% significance level. That's good. Sufficient evidence to suggest. And we are concluding that OTF members are doing better their second time around than their first. The big issue here is that we're saying that everyone did better the second time than the first time. And that's simply not true. In this setting, we're talking about our population mean difference. So we're saying how well did how much better did OTF members do on average? And if we look at the table, there are some members who got a negative difference, so they did do worse. So we're being a little bit too strong here by saying all OTF members, so this statement would be not appropriate. If we wanted to rewrite it, we could simply add that this was true on average, and that would help fix this statement. Finally, question E, corporate would like to know the smallest significance level, so we know that is alpha, 
that could have been initially selected for which the null hypothesis would be rejected. Well, we know the rule is that when the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, that's when our decision is to reject h naught. So if our alpha is above the p-value, we will reject h naught and conclude a statistically significant result. So if our alpha is 5%, we reject h naught. If our alpha is 1%, we reject h naught. If our alpha was equal to the p-value they gave us of 0 0.0034, we would still reject h naught according to this rule. But as soon as alpha dips below that, let's say alpha is now only 0 0.003, that is now below our p-value, and we would fail to reject h naught. So in this situation, the smallest significance level we could use is simply equal to the value of our p-value. And that is the only answer we can accept here. That concludes page two of the exam.